Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in January. This video is very delayed, I'm so sorry about that, but this past month I did manage to read four books and it was a pretty strong start for me for this year. I ended up reading three fantasies and a graphic novel. So let's just dive into the first one, which was Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a standalone set in the same world as the Kingdom of the Wicked series. Now these standalones are focusing on a singular couple with a new Prince of Hell as a love interest in each new standalone. For this book, Throne of the Fallen, I ended up rating it a 3 out of 5 stars. We're set in Ravely Green, which is a city in a mortal world pretty similar to Regency London and we're following Camilla who is running her father's struggling art gallery. Prince Envy swoops into Camilla's world mainly because of a years-long game that has negatively affected his court unless he wins this game. And Camilla, she holds a key clue for the next step in this game and whether this helps or not, they both have a undeniable attraction to each other. I did end up enjoying this one because it is what you would expect from a romanticy and there is that spice factor if you were into that. Since this is Prince Envy's book, the aspect of jealousy and envy really did shine through. It was very entertaining to see Camilla and Prince Envy trying to make each other jealous while they are developing feelings for each other and often using each other to achieve their own goals. So it's a lot of power play and manipulation back and forth. There's a lot of great tension and chemistry with these two and it did help to bring the plot along which wasn't something that I was a huge fan of. But overall, I really had fun with this one and from what I understand, the next book is going to be focusing on Prince Gluttony and the title of this one is Throne of Secrets and I will be picking that one up because I really have a fun time with these types of books. And the next book I did finish was a reread and this is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. This is book two in the Crescent City series. This one I ended up lowering my original rating. So I originally rated this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Now I am rating it 4 out of 5 stars. For those who aren't familiar with the series, we're following half human, half fae Bryce Quinlan and she is living in a urban fantastical city, which is populated by angels, mere folk, fae, humans, shifters, witches, and many more other creatures. Bryce is enjoying her 20s and unexpectedly tragedy strikes. She is pulled into solving a crime that she does not want to solve but she's forced into it and along her side is uh, Hunt Athelar who is going to be her partner in crime as well as her bodyguard. Book two, there's more action, mystery, and world building. Rereading these giant books really do help refresh the memory so I finished rereading the Akatar series as well as the Crescent City series before House of Flame and Shadow and I will have a full review up hopefully by this week and keep an eye out for that. For this book, I really did enjoy the focus on the side characters which we have Rune, Ethan, and Therian. I really did like their storylines in this one. Bryce and Hunt, they continue their romance and they realize they have deeper connections with each other than they first realize. Why I did end up lowering my rating by half a star is because there is a lot of setup for book three in this one and that did slow down the pace of the book a lot. So I felt like there was a lot of fan service in this one, especially with that cliffhanger. And I think that's why I ended up rating it a little bit lower this time around. But keep your eyes peeled for that book review of book three, House of Flame and Shadow. Next, I read a graphic novel. This is Saga Volume 11 by Brian K. Vaughn. And I rate this one a four out of five stars. This graphic novel series is very adult and we are following a small family whose parents are from opposing sides of an intergalactic war and they have many enemies that are coming after them. So in volume 11 we continue to see where Hazel is with her family and all of the going-ons that are happening in her life and how it's very very not fun <laughs> how real life can be. For the saga series it's better if you binge the volumes back to back and I think that is what I'm going to be doing going forward and I'm just going to wait until more volumes are released so I could just read it back to back because sometimes it's hard to remember what exactly happened and with graphic novels you tend to read them really quickly 
but in this volume i really did like the reference to amazon warehouses and the really bad working conditions that are in those warehouses it's a small reference but <laughs> there is dark humor in this series as well the last book I read in January was Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. This is book two in the Emily Wilde series and I rated it a four out of five stars. I would describe the Emily Wilde series as being a cozy fantasy with a scholarly protagonist, violent fae, and also journalistic entries. We re-encounter with a protagonist, Emily Wilde, who is a professor from Oxford University and she has returned from her expedition to a remote village and there she finds those elusive fae that she was trying to research and she ends up finishing her fairy encyclopedia. Now in the sequel, Emily is working on a new project and it's a book of maps of the fairy realms. And with many mysterious fairies and happenings going around her university, she needs a little bit of help from her partner, Wendell Bambley. And he was an academic rival, but now they are working in a partnership together and I really like them too together. I love diving back into Emily's world and especially with these type of fairies and it really highlights how dangerous fairies can be especially towards mortals and how mischievous they can be and how they really adhere to their own cultural ways. Also I really liked how the author emphasized the danger of fairy lands and how they're not all magical and happy-go-lucky but that there is real danger in these fairy realms, especially to mortals. Another thing that I really enjoyed was the shifting relationship and dynamics between Emily and Wendell. There's a lot of banter, teasing, and understated flirting, and with these two, their interactions were a delight to read about. Also, I really did like the introduction of Aradne, who is Emily's niece, and she's very bright and bubbly, and it's a nice contrast to Emily's more studious personality. The part that was lacking for me was the feeling of us actually reading journal entries, because the format of this book is written in journal entries, and the first little bit of the book, it just felt not journal entries, it was just normal prose but it got a lot better as the plot went on and i really did enjoy emily's little footnotes and her voice as a protagonist despite a slowish beginning i really thoroughly enjoyed this one so those were all the four books that i read in january i hope you enjoyed watching this video and comment down below what you read in january as well and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and i'll see you all in the next one bye